Okay, in this video, we're gonna be finding an arc length parameterization. So there's a couple things you need to know before you can get started. So let's look at those. The first thing is we need to figure out how to calculate arc length as a function of t, or just arc length as a function in general. So that looks like this. S is the integral from a to t of the magnitude of r prime of u du. So there's uh, like four variables that you're kind of looking at. You got s, a, t, and then u. So s is arc length. T is usually time, um, but uh, A and U are a little less clear. So A is just where you're gonna start. So it's almost always given in the problem. If it's not given, you usually just choose something convenient, um, often just zero. Um, so that's what A is gonna be. U is just a dummy variable because typically R is a function of T and we want the upper bound of our integral to be a T. So we don't wanna use T in the integrand so that's just one of those sticky little details of math. Uh, the next thing that we need to know is that what we're going to want to do after we evaluate this integral is we're going to want to solve s of t for t. So we're going to get s as some crazy function of t, probably. Um, and then we're going to solve that for t, so we'll get t as some function of s. And then once we do that, we're going to take it and we're going to sub back into r of t and that's going to create a function of s. So we'll get r of s. So that's what we're going to do there. And then frequently you'll see that after you do that, you switch back to t. So you do all this work, get r of s, and then you'll switch it back to t. Um, I'm probably not going to do that in this problem, but you'll see that a lot, especially when you like look up your answers in the back of a textbook or something like that. So let's see what the problem is. We want to reparameterize r of t equals e to the 2t cosine of 2t. So that's the first component, comma 2, comma e to the 2t sine of 2t. Um, we're going to start at t equals 0, and we're going to go in the direction of increasing t. OK, so uh, let's see what to do. First thing we need to do is actually find r prime, which is not really trivial. So r prime of t. So the first component there is a product, so I need the product rule. So it's gonna be first, which is e to the 2t times the derivative of cosine of 2t. So that gives me negative two, e to the 2t sine of 2t, um, plus two e to the 2t cosine of 2t. So first derivative of the second plus second derivative of the first, just the product rule, but don't forget it. Um, the derivative of two is zero, so that's nice. And then uh, for the third component, it's basically the same as the first. It's a product, so it's gonna be first derivative of the second plus second derivative of the first. So I can't even fit it up online because it's pretty long. So we get first derivative of the second plus second derivative of the first. Okay, so that's r prime of t. Now what we need to do is we actually need to find the magnitude of r prime of t. So that'll be the integrand of our integral. So the magnitude of this or the norm of this, first, let's simplify this because uh, we got a lot of e to the two t's or two e to the two t's. And it's just gonna make our life easier. So take out 2e to the 2t, reverse things a little bit, um, and we get this. So this is a much nicer way of writing this. You can even fit it on one line. Um, so let's find the norm. Okay, so the norm is the square root of, um, and then it's gonna be uh, each component squared, and then we add them up. So if I square the first thing, it's gonna be uh, 4e to the 4t, and then I need to square cosine of 2t minus sine of 2t, so if you think about that, that's going to give me uh, cosine squared, then minus 2 cosine 2t sine of 2t, and then plus sine squared of 2t. So cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So actually, I'm just going to simplify that right away. 1, and then there's still a minus 2 cosine of 2t sine of 2t. Um, if I square 0, I just get 0, so that's nice. If I square the last thing, I get another 4e to the 2t. And then almost the same thing happens when I square cosine of 2t plus sine of 2t. I get cosine squared, and then plus 2 sine cosine, and then plus sine squared. And then cosine squared plus sine squared is 1, so I end up with 1 plus 2 sine cosine. So sine of 2t, cosine of 2t. So I have this. This is all under one radical, so let's finish that. Um, and if we look at this, uh, we can simplify it a lot because uh, there's a 
4e to the 4t in the first thing and the second thing. So that's 8e to the 4t. And then I get minus 2 sine cosine times 4e to the 4t. And I get plus 2 sine cosine times 4e to the 4t. So those actually cancel. So the only thing that's left after you simplify this is 8e to the 4t. And that we can simplify a little bit more. Um, I'm going to make it e to the 2t times radical 8. So that's our prime, the norm of our prime, the magnitude, the length, uh, whatever you want to call it. So now we can set up our integral. So we want to figure out what s is. So s is the integral from 0, because I was given in the problem, to t of the norm of r prime, which we just figured out. And I'm going to change the variable from uh, t to u, and then du. OK, so we need to evaluate this integral. We can factor out the radical 8. Um, e to the 2u, so there should be a 2, so I'm going to multiply by 1 half. You can do the u substitution if you want. Um, and then we have e to the 2u. We have to evaluate from 0 to t. OK, so uh, radical 8 is actually 2 root 2. So 2 root 2 over 2, I'm going to simplify to just radical 2. And then it's going to be the quantity e to the 2t minus, when I plug in 0, I get e to the 0, which is 1. So that's what s is equal to. So that's uh, we're like halfway there. So we figure out what s is. Now our job is to take this thing that we have in the box and solve it for t. So to do that, I'm first going to divide both sides by radical 2. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. Uh, I need to get that exponent down, so I'm going to take natural log of both sides. And then I want to solve for t, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So I get t is 1 half the natural log of s over radical 2 plus 1. So I'm going to put that in a box because that's another step. So what I want to do now is I want to take this value that I found for t, and I want to take r of t, and I'm just going to do a substitution. So to do that, there's a couple things that are going to clean up a little bit. Uh, first, that e to the 2t, when I make my substitution, gives me e to the 2, and then 1 half natural log of that stuff. And then the 2 and the 1 half cancel, so I just get e to the natural log of that stuff. But e and natural log are inverses of each other. So e to the natural log of something is just whatever that thing is. So this whole thing just kind of boils down to this. So I get e to the 2t simplifies down to s over root 2 and then plus 1. So that's good. Um, so now I'm just going to make my substitutions. So. First, I have to plug in for e to the 2t. So e to the 2t we just saw becomes the quantity s over root 2 plus 1. Um, cosine of 2 times t, so the 2 and the 1 half from 1 half natural log, those cancel. So this becomes, it's kind of gross, but it's cosine of the natural log of s over root 2 plus 1. 2 doesn't change, so the middle component there. And then uh, almost the same thing happens here. So the e to the 2t becomes this. Sine of 2t becomes sine of natural log of s over root 2 plus 1. And there we go. That's our arc length parameterization. So to check and see if you did it right, one of the things you can do is you can find the uh, magnitude. So if we find the, well, the, the magnitude of r prime. So if we find the magnitude of r prime, we're going to see that we get 1. Uh, I'm not actually going to do the work because that seems really annoying. Um, but we definitely get it. Uh, so what I did to just confirm that is I, the calculator is being pretty picky about it because there's a lot of domain type things involved. So I just graphed the norm. I had to name the function m for, for various reasons. Um, so I found the norm of it, and the norm of the derivative, and then I graphed it. And you can see that it's consistently 1, but there's some domain issue there. So the calculator refused to simplify it algebraically. Um, it just wanted to give me all these warnings. And another thing we can do is we can check if see if the integral of the norm, um, so basically the uh, arc length, if we find the arc length on any particular interval, should give us the length of the interval. So if I do the, the arc length from 0 to 5, I just get 5. If I do the arc length from 3 to 5, I just get 2, because 5 minus 3 is 2. Um, so that's why it's, sometimes it's called a unit speed parameterization. Because uh, if you move for five units of time, you move five units along the curve. If you move for 10 units of time, you move 10 units along the curve. 
so there you go. Um, they tend to be a little bit messy because you have to do a bunch of things and uh, finding the norm of these functions is almost never nice. But uh, there you go. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.